On the night of January 19 to 20th of 1990, troops of the former Soviet Union entered Baku city and several regions of Azerbaijan without declaring a state of emergency. The occupation of Baku by the Soviet Army Special Forces and a large contingent of internal troops was accompanied by special cruelty and unprecedented atrocities. Until the introduction of the state of emergency was announced to the population, the Soviet Army deployed a large contingent of special and internal troops in Baku who deployed unprecedented cruelty against the peaceful population. The army had brutally killed 82 civilians and severely wounded 20 others until a curfew was announced. Several days after the curfew was announced, 21 more civilians were murdered in Baku. Eight more civilians were killed in areas where a curfew had not been imposed on January the 25th in Neftchala, on January the 26th in Lankaran. As a result of the January tragedy, 131 civilians were killed and 744 more were wounded in Baku and nearby regions. Mass arrests accompanied the illegal deployment of troops and the subsequent military intervention. A total of 841 civilians were arrested in Baku and other cities and regions of the Republic, 112 of whom were sent to prisons in different cities of the USSR. The Soviet troops fired on 200 homes, 80 cars and set fire to a large number of public and private property, including ambulances. The constitution of the USSR and the constitution of the Azerbaijan SSR were grossly violated and the sovereign rights of the Republic of Azerbaijan were violated. This premeditated act of aggression was aimed at stifling the struggle of the Azerbaijani people for democracy and national freedom, insulting the people and inflicting a moral blow on them. On the eve of the events of January the 20th, the policy of the leadership of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union against the interests of the people, non-objective and biased line taken by the center and personally by Mikhail Gorbachev against the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Azerbaijan caused the anger of large masses of the people. Various preparatory works were carried out in connection with the deployment and provision of military forces in Baku several days before the events. The hospitals of Baku city were hastily evacuated, preparations were made for accommodating a large number of wounded, and the family members of Soviet army servicemen were urgently transferred from Baku city. Thus, all conditions were created for military aggression and the introduction of troops. The deployment of troops to Baku served the purpose of maintaining the communist regime and suppressing the national liberation movement. At the meeting of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Azerbaijan held on January the 14th, 1990, the proposals put forward regarding the introduction of a state of emergency were related to the fear of losing power. On January the 15th, 1990, when Elmira Gafarova, the chairman of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the Azerbaijan SSR, was on a trip to Moscow in the absence of a quorum at the illegal meeting of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the Azerbaijan SSR in the decision taken at the insistence of Abdurrahman Vazirov, the first secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Azerbaijan, who declared a state of emergency. This once again confirms that the January 20th tragedy is a premeditated criminal act. Declaring a state of emergency in Baku without a legal basis, the armed forces entering the city and brutally killing the civilian population with heavy equipment and destructive weapons without facing any resistance was a crime against the people of Azerbaijan. This punitive measure was consciously planned and brutally executed. The main goal was to attack the people's movement in Azerbaijan, prevent the collapse of the existing regime and destroy the forces fighting for independence. On January the 19th, as the next stage of the military operation, the power block of the Azerbaijani television was blown up and the broadcasts of the Republic's television and radio were completely interrupted. Since the day of the tragedy, the activities of other mass media have been suspended and the people have been deprived of the right to receive information. Former USSR Minister of Defense Dmitry Yazov, Minister of Eternal Affairs Vadim Bakatin and other high-ranking military personnel came to Baku to carry out this planned criminal operation. The tragedy of January the 20th which brought terror and misfortune to the people of Azerbaijan, caused echoes all over the world and caused the anger and fury of progressive forces. The radio stations of many countries also gave comprehensive information about the January tragedy and cursed the imperial forces.